Yes. Awesome. All right, guys. Again, you know the drill. If you have a question, please raise your hand. Uh, Will, we'll start with you because I know you got to jump. Hello, Christian. How are you? Good, Will. Thank you. You? I'm fantastic. Um, just Good. some housekeeping to start. Um, what were you able to find out about Camille and uh, and Bill from the MRIs? Um, they did the MRI yesterday, and uh, it's more or less what uh, the performance department, the medical department thought. Um, we hope to have Camille back within seven, maximum 10 days. And uh, and for Bill, it, it will take a little bit longer. Um, we will see how they progress. The, I spoke with both of them today. I spoke with both of them um, personally, and uh, they feel they feel pretty pretty good, better than they thought. But sometimes the feeling that you have doesn't match the you know the the time that it takes to recover well with with the muscles. So we need to respect you know the healing of the body at the same time, trying to do our best to recover them as soon as possible. Sometimes it's possible by following certain procedures, certain protocols to speed up uh, the healing. And uh, that's what we want to do. How much does this put a strain on both positions being obviously uh, the thin, numbers are thin at both of those positions right now? Yeah, it does because there are two players that they are hitting form. We saw with Camille, uh, thought he took very well the role of captain in the game, scoring the, the important goal, the 1-0. All the goals are important, but the one that uh, put you in front is always probably the the most important one and uh, he was there to create chances and to after that he had a, he's a great shot that just went a little bit over the bar it would have been just a few inches and the two goals in, in in two minutes for Camille and that would be uh, you know the eyes in on on the cake but unfortunately instead he felt something and he preferred not to not to continue not to not knowing what he had and so i thought i thought he did the right thing in in stopping and not aggravating the situation but obviously uh for us he's a player that he was eating form but he's combative and he can't wait to be back build the same is i thought that he was playing really well in the role that i gave him in the game and uh I thought that it was one of those the players that was uh, improving more and more uh, within within the team because obviously he's now more familiar with the principle of play, more familiar with his role and responsibility, and uh, I think his qualities uh, were showing more on the ball of the ball. He understand the time, you know, when doing some tactical changes in the in the game. Uh, he's aggressive. Uh, he's good in the air. And so he's a player that uh, we we miss. But uh, listen, we have uh, other players, and football is like that. You know, there will be opportunities for different players to step in the position and to give a good account of themselves. This is how football life. This is how life works. Uh, lastly, for me, I know that uh, the memories of the game itself are ones you don't want to think about, but it is uh, the side of your first ever contest uh, in D.C. Uh, any mm -hmm. memories come to mind from that particular experience and, and things that you might hearken back to when uh, when you're inside Audi Field on Saturday? No, of course, uh, I don't want to carry those memories. You know, we move on, life moves on. And these 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 memories are memories that they are they have a right to be in the sense that there was an historic moment for the club. Our first game we were all awaiting and uh, really emotionally charged for that game. I remember us going 1-0 one, one up uh, with Titi Ortiz ahead. I remember that. And then he was pulled back by the VAR. And then we made a couple of mistakes. And unfortunately, we were punished. They We were given a penalty against that, in my opinion, was very soft against Brandt. So I have memories, but, uh, you know, the memories stay in that moment. And then uh, we need to move on. and. Uh, we will go to play. We played against uh, DC all the time since then, and uh, you know we are focused on this game. Uh, nothing to do with uh, 
with uh, you know the memory of time. Thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you. All right, uh, Carol. Hey, Christian. How are you? Hey, Carol. Thank you. You? I am good. I um got some questions Tuesday night about Vinny Mello and whether he was a consideration for you on the roster in the U.S. Open Cup. No, it wasn't because um, I thought that that. Uh, we had uh, less players and I didn't think he was in, uh, in form uh, to play this game. I thought that the other players were in a better position to contribute to, to the team. That's all. It was a football consideration by watching him on a daily basis training. Okay. And um, also we saw the news uh, last night about Adam Armour and I just wondered if you could speak to maybe what it was that, that didn't really pan out with him and, and Charlotte FC at this point. I don't know. I think Adam, um, he was one of the first players that was acquired. He was even, he was here before I arrived. So he was a choice of the, the front office and they had decided to bring this young talent to Charlotte. Sometimes in, in life and football doesn't make, is not an exception. Things don't work in the way that you would like to work, despite you try everything to make it work. And uh, he went down to Crown Legacy and then uh, it was a choice of the club to uh, for the best of everybody to go in separate ways. This uh, this is part of football, this is part of life. I want to wish Adam all the best. I really, I love him dearly. I think he's a great kid. And uh, again, the, the sometimes the criticism that I have with players is that they are professional. It very, very seldom, almost never, it happens to me to have a personal issue with a player, more professional and then... On the personal side, I can say that uh, I really like Adam. He's a kid that uh, uh, has, uh, has a, can have a cheeky side like most uh, young players, but uh, and, and not only the young players. But uh, sometimes, as I said before, is uh, is about football and is is a professional football, and sometimes the best way is to go separate ways. Okay, I don't I don't have any easy questions today. So I mean, uh, Chris, Christian Kalina said he you know he feels like he's ready, he's close. Do you feel like you have a decision to make with him yet? Or I think he, I think yes, I think I have a decision to make with him. I don't know, I haven't decided yet. Uh, I, it was great to see Christian back in action. Uh, I have to say that, and you can see the qualities that he has uh, in terms of personality, in terms of uh, leadership, uh, but also uh, you also can see that he's not exactly 100%. So, and that is understandable when you come from so many months out of action and you are re coming back into, into your profession. You know, it's not so easy to, it's almost impossible to expect that you left that you start from where you left in the in your best games. We all have in our eyes uh, Christian being man of the match and to be uh, one of the best players of Charlotte FC. But the reality is that uh, you need to build yourself in that position by playing games and by, you know, also for him regaining confidence. He's training with us. He trained again today and... Uh, but he will take time for him. He's not. Uh, he's a human being, and he needs time to build himself for to be the the important player that you know is is gonna be for us. Two more quick ones. Westwood you, is he still on track to to be available? He is. He is. He is. Okay. Uh, I think and then another midfielder, Nuno Santos. Is he back practicing, or is there any chance we'll see him in in some shape or form? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think for now, Nuno is uh, is going to be with Crown Legacy. Okay. Thank you, Christian. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you, Carol. Uh, Mike. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, Christian. Good to see you. Good afternoon, Mike. Good to see you, too. The uh, the game Tuesday, uh, in your post-game comments, you uh, described yourself as a little agitated. Uh, because the the guys may have let off the gas a little bit in in that in that win over South Georgia, have they gotten the message in the last two days about you being agitated and and let's not do that again? 
No, they know. No, I think that I was not agitated because uh, I knew that we are building this mentality, and I know that uh, uh, that is a work in progress in that way. And we saw also in the result yesterday and uh, you know two days ago that there are some big teams that you know either they win last minute or they go to penalties or they actually are out in the first round because these guys uh, they play. First of all, they are good players. Some of them play in MLS. Some some of them, they were very close to side with MLS. And sometimes luck is that, uh, you know, Danny Rios, for example, was a player that for a few years played in USL. And you can tell what kind of impact could they have in MLS. So I think that the quality in USL, USL 1, is not bad at all. And uh, what you need to do, obviously, the intensity is less, is a bit less. And uh, the general quality is a little bit less, but you have to be, you have to build a strong mentality. The mentality is by taking every game with the same uh, uh, mental state, with the same energy, with the same positivity, with the same uh, commitment and grit. And so I can get agitated if I can see moments in which we we were not. And it's best that they see me agitated and they that they, they don't also because i can guarantee you that that come from experience and uh, and unfortunately i've been in games where we didn't probably we put the foot off the gas me included and then we got punished and uh, you know it is important that this never happens this never happens because if you want to build a, a strong team you have to start with building a strong mentality Looking ahead to Saturday, uh, obviously you, you you maintain that it's all about what you guys do and not so much the opponent. But what does this opponent do that you have to be ready to counter and 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 go? No, no, but before? Mike, we all we always take into consideration a lot what the the opponents do. It's not that we don't consider them or we don't we analyze them a lot. The, the 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 one thing that I want to be clear is that I don't want us to you know, give up our identity of play and our style of play because of the opposition. This is not. But we take a lot uh, into consideration the tactical strength and weaknesses of the opposition. So with the DC, is the same. We had a little bit less time to prepare because of the schedule. But uh, we saw video today about how they defend, what they are. The, tomorrow we will watch them when they are in possession. So... Uh, we will go, we will dig deep uh, in what they do. We know them, we play them in preseason already. So we know what kind of strength is a strong team, is it in form as well. So we are very well aware of the challenges that they will uh, uh, provide for us. Is there is there one thing in particular that they've done well so far that, you know, offensively, defensively? Yeah, many things, many things. Of course, uh, they are bringing Benteke more into the game. Uh, he's become uh, a central figure in the way they play, not just in finish, but also in the building up. Uh, the Polish midfielder Glick, and they also found a different role for Paulson starting from the back. And so they have two wing backs that they can go forward and they are really good in the offensive phase in Santos and, uh, you know, uh, the Brazilian uh, Ruan. And Fontas is also is a very good striker, technical technical ability. So they have qualities everywhere uh, that we have to be. The experience of Bernbaum, Canus in the league. So it's a team that we need to. We know that they have uh, a, a number of uh, strong points, and it's up to us to to give them a strong game. Last one for me. Uh, we're going to go to the movies. I want to know. Who plays Christian Latanzio in the movie about Christian Latanzio? Who do you want to play you? Oof. I don't know. Uh, this is a great question because whatever I say, I'm dumb, right? Because if I choose uh, a good-looking guy, I think that I see myself. <laughs> uh, you know what? I want to ask Carol, who would you play in my, my role? <laughs> We got to go Italian, right? Like Al, Al Pacino with the the, the Italian heritage. Uh, I mean, Al, Al Pacino would be great. Would make me a little bit older. That, <laughs> but in terms of quality, I can't complain about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come up with a better answer with some time. How about that? All right. All right. <laughs>
So you're going to dodge the question? No, is that I don't know. Um, you know, um, it's a good question. Let me get. Let me prepare better on that one. <laughs> let me prepare better on that one. I play myself. I want to do like Sylvester Stallone did for Rocky. I will play myself. Fair enough. Thank <laughs> I'll you. I'll play myself. So at least, you know, I've got only myself to blame. <laughs> Had you gone Brad Pitt, I think people would have thought oh, you might have been over no, the top. This is, a, this is a different league, Brad Pitt. There's nothing to do. No, 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 no. no. I will play my own role and then I'll take the blame. Thank you, Christian. Good, good, good luck this weekend. <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> thank you, Mike. All right. Thank you, guys. Apple guys will move to the other Zoom.